the guests of a hotel to be safe, to be secure, to, to be comfortable and know that there's not some peeping Tom, literally, who's out there getting you. And so I think that the, the jury was outraged, and I think her case resonates with you, me, and everybody, because if you're a person who travels or if you're a person who's ever sure. stayed in a hotel in your life, you're not thinking somebody's outside watching you. And so I think that's something that really can, people can relate to. Uh, and, of course, in the Hulk Hogan scenario, it wasn't any hotel or any type of property manager issue. It was his best friend who set him up. Oh, come on, King Jordan, come over to my house. Oh, yeah, use that bedroom. No problem. Oh, yeah, we're good friends. I mean, it's horrible that his friend did that to him. And, again, it seems to me that his issue should be with his friend and only his friend because I, I just, I, while I'm very sympathetic to him, I, I'm very also sympathetic to the media's right to allow the public to know. And I think it was a bold move on Gorka's part and, you know, the, the lines that need to be drawn. But I think the press, if you're a public figure, you know, it's unfortunate, but uh, people want to know about you and what you're doing. So we'll see, we'll see what the jury decides. Okay, final story talked about uh, a team playing no contest. Uh, in a prom day killing, here's a, a small clip of that, we'll talk. A teenager who stabbed a classmate the day of their junior prom pled no contests to murder Monday in Connecticut. Christopher Plaskin took a plea deal in the case where he was accused of killing 16-year-old Marin Sanchez at Jonathan Law High School in April of 2014. According to the Associated Press, Plaskin stabbed Sanchez repeatedly after she rejected his invitation to the prom. According to an arrest warrant affidavit, a witness tried to pull Plaskin off Sanchez during the attack. Prosecutors said they will seek a 25-year prison sentence. Very sad case, uh, Joey Jackson. Um, does the, uh, this, uh, wor- is this um, okay from a prosecution standpoint? that they're only going to give him maybe 25, even less, possibly, uh, for this heinous, heinous attack. Yeah, I, I think it raises a number of issues. It really does. I mean, what you and, and the, the two issues that come to mind most immediately to me uh, are the juvenile status of the actual attacker, uh, the murderer, in addition to the mental health history and his mental health and how we deal with and treat mental health. And let's talk about both of those things. Number one, again, more generically, you know, when you see a lot of crimes that are committed and murders and other things, there are people who have serious, significant mental health deficiencies. And I think as a society, we need to deal with that. And in this specific case, this kid who was 16 was calling his dad from prison, basically saying, you know, he was hearing things and seeing things and someone was making him do it. And I think that you ultimately, not only that, but any kid who's going to stab someone and kill them for not going on a date, you have to question their mental, I mean, their mental capacity. It's just, it's kind of absurd. So I think we have have to do a better job as a society dealing with treating, recognizing, being sympathetic to, and not, you know, joking over or joking about mental health. I think the other issue is how we deal with juveniles. You know, the tenets of our criminal justice system, of course, are punishment, deterrence, and rehabilitation. And so, you know, when you come to juveniles, the real issue is rehabilitation. When you're 16, you know, generally speaking, you can be rehabilitated. You know, the old expression, you can't teach uh, an old dog new tricks. Well, new tricks, you're kind right? of a new dog, right? <laughs> so you're, if you're a new dog, you still can be taught. So I, I think that, you know, generally, if it's an adult, we, we view things differently. We look at punishing. We look at the extent to which you should really you know, get punished for what you did. And when you're an adult murderer, I'm not sure that there's much of an outlook for rehabilitation. You know, when you're an adult, you kind of should know that killing people is not the way to live. Not that you should know that as a, as a juvenile. So I think the well, issue Especially then, in that heinous way it was done. Of, not to say that course. there's a good way of killing somebody, obviously, but that that's with the knife is really brutal. It's brutal. You it's would horrible. Agree. So I... And I think, look, 16-year-olds know better, and they should know better, but I think that, you know, there's a reason society treats juveniles differently. And we should also let the, you know, the, the listeners know that he will only do 15 of those 25 years because in Connecticut uh, what happens is, is the law allows juveniles to serve 60% of their time because they're juveniles. So juveniles, uh, so the moral of the so story is So he could be out in, uh, what is it, 20 by 20, 
25, is it? Something like that? He's he's 18 now, and he'll serve uh, 15 years. He's been in for two years. So, yeah, he'll be out if, if he uh, is 18 now and it's 13 more years. He'll be out when he's 31. So, uh, you know, you got to focus on that is like really out. low. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. Somebody. Yeah, for killing someone. So you got to, and that's again why you need to focus while he's in jail on rehabbing him because you don't want him to come out and at 31. If I was a family, he, and if you were a family, probably uh, speaking out, out of a lawyer's, you know, position, you would probably be outraged, right? Sure, absolutely. It's, it's you know, it's tragic, but. You know, we really have to, to deal with juveniles better. We have to deal with, uh, we, you know, the issue of mental health in a, in a more effective way. But it's it's tough. I mean, the juvenile issues are tough because the law distinguishes between a ju- juvenile's brain development, their punishment, their treatment, and everything else, and how an actual adult is treated. So it's a sad story. You know, blessings to the family all the way around for losing such a beautiful and precious little girl. You know, who was so well grounded and happy and lovely and had her whole life ahead of her, and you know, it's it's just it's the family must be sick to their stomach over this. Yes, indeed. I do have one caller for you. Uh, would you mind taking it? Of course not. Let it roll. Okay, let's go out to Virginia <laughs> and say hello to Mary. Good evening, Mary. You're on the phone with Joey Jackson on King Jordan Radio. Hi, Jordan. Hi, Joy. Is Hi. this Mary the Great? Yeah, Mary from Virginia. Yes. How are you, Joy? Mary the Great. I am fabulous. How are you Mary doing? Mary the Great? <laughs> okay, I'm just um, listening to, you, to uh, you talk and all these. Um, it's one thing I just want to say. It amazes me how some people get themselves in these situations that they ought to know better. If you're going to sit and do a sex tape and involve more than three people, you might as well think that somewhere down the line, a few years into the future, somehow a sex tape is going to come out. You think? You know, it has to be sore. <laughs> so exactly. You kind, of, you kind of should listen to your gut feeling that said, oh, maybe I shouldn't do this and, and don't do it, you know. But I have a, I have a personal question for you, Joy. Can I ask you? Of course you can. Talk to me. Okay. Well, did you know that 47% of Congress are made up of lawyers? Did you know that? Oh, man, I thought it was more than that. No wonder why everything is uh, as bad as it is out there. You know, actually, I thought it was a lot, actually. But my question is, you know, you're so so smart. You're so... um, bright and knowledgeable and affable. You you appeal to masses of people. You you are so articulate and you love to talk. <laughs> and I just you know, watching the debates and all that, I'm just thinking, boy, would I love to see Joey Jackson running for some office? Because I certainly <laughs> would be your number one supporter. <laughs> you know, Mary, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm grateful for that. I really do appreciate that. Let me tell you what the problem is with that. The problem okay. is, is that you know, I, I there there would be nothing more than I would like to do than to be of service either to my community or to my state or something else. The problem is, is that when you listen to these political debates and discussions, you, you know, I I won't name anything in particular or anyone in particular, but it seems to me that the discussions are so. It's not about you know how you can uplift the community, how you can uplift the society. It's about you right. know did you did you melt crayons on the radiator when you were two? You know did you yeah. uh, you know were you mean to your dog? You know when when you were growing yeah. up? But did you? That's why like we ridiculous. need someone. That's why we need someone with your character, Joey. But the fact is okay. is that you know it's so, but the attacks are so personal, and it's you know yeah. it's yeah. like and I just you know I, I mean. You know, while I would love to do something like that, I just don't think I have the stomach to, for somebody, you know, to talk about my wife, to talk about, you know, my family, yeah, to talk I'm, about. Yeah. It's like, it's just so, it's like, let's, if we, if it were limited, if politics was about, you know, how do you feel about any limited issue? Let's talk about juvenile justice. Let's talk about the death penalty. Yeah. Let's talk okay. about growing the economy. Let's talk about how we do, you know, farm policy. If it was limited to that, I'd be all for it. But I just well, couldn't envision how I would feel when somebody starts saying, you know, hey, you know, 
didn't you get into a fight when you were 17 years old with Jimmy from down the block? And wasn't it because yeah. you said something about your mother? It's like, really? You know, it's just, yeah. it's so awful that I, who wants to be involved in that? And I think that's why a lot of people who could potentially serve and serve admirably shy away from it because they don't have the stomach to deal with the personal attacks that come when you run for office. Yeah, and, and that is such a shame because someone like you with your perspective, you could do so much good uh, maybe, um, you know, as a legislature, making laws that affect uh, children or uh, for mental illness support and things like that, that where you could make a difference. But I understand it's the politics is really it's something hard to deal with. <laughs> when the people that are not politicians, they're just another group of people too. So I, I am <laughs> grateful, though, Mary. I am grateful. Um, <laughs> well, I'm so You're glad. I'm so glad to be able to talk with you. And uh, um, Jordan asked one of my questions because I tweeted you about it about the nice thing. Uh, about the parole hearing, would it affect the you answer that question? Right, right. right. Yeah, well, that's... Anyway, well, you have, have a good evening and say hello to Katya and um, bye, Jordan. And thank enjoy thank you, Mary, for the call. Well, appreciate it. Okay, 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 Joey, before we let you go, uh, two things. Shout out to Maddie and Sharon. And give me your take on Peyton Manning retiring. <laughs> Um, I echo that shout-out to Maddie, Sharon, and, uh, you know, just, just, again, beautiful people, salt of the earth, and I'm just so fortunate and grateful to to, to know them and just for all the things that they do. And uh, I'm hopeful that Sharon okay. gets 100% better soon. Uh, you know, um, interestingly, in terms of Peyton, I just think he was such an ambassador to the sport. I just think, you know, he's just he has always been such a gentleman, I think he's represented the sport with dignity and grace. He has a lot of class. I could not be happier for a person to go out on top as I am for him. I, I just think he's a class act. And, you know, and, and I also think that not only was he talented, you know, there are a lot of people who are talented. But when and you have a talented amazing. person. Amazing. Right? But when you have, uh, unbelievable. But when you have a talented person who is such a student, uh, of the game. And when I say of the game, whatever game you're in, whether you're talented and, you know, whether you're talented and you're a doctor, whether you're talented and you're a teacher, whether you're talented and you're a scientist, when you're talent, talent is one thing, but for you to back up that talent with work ethic and to really take it seriously and to study and to go at it and to match that talent and get every bit of talent you can because you just did the best you can. To me, it's impressive. So I'm a huge Peyton Manning fan. I think the sport, you know, is going to miss him greatly. I think there are many great things that he's going to do with his life. And I couldn't be happier that, you know, he got a Super Bowl victory on his way out the door. And I just wish him nothing but uh, but greatness because he just, he's been great. He's been great for the sport. He's you know, I was listening to a, to a local uh, talk show here in New York, and they said it was kind of reminding of uh, when Mickey Mantle retired. And Bob uh, Costas gave the eulogy back in '95. It, it had that feel to it. Yeah, it's uh, it's you know what I I would just have to say it, it's uh, it was an incredible moment in sports history, and uh, I think well deserved. And you know he's uh, he affected a lot of lives, and he continues to affect a lot of lives. And I think he's a heck of a role model uh, for for the youth and other people. You know, so God bless him. God bless you, Peyton Manning. Go do your thing. <laughs> Absolutely. And, Joey, when can we catch, when can the uh, listeners and viewers catch you on CNN or HLN uh, this week or this weekend? Well, what will happen is is that we're dealing right now, we're in coverage with, uh, it's interesting to Mary's point, with uh, politics. So I think we're going to be focused on the uh, the Republican debate. We're going to be focused on the issue involving Super Tuesday, and we're doing a lot of political stuff. But, uh, you know, I'll be back next week, and generally speaking, you can catch me. Uh, I know I'll be back on Monday in the noon on CNN. And when I'll be is back the actual, uh, uh, you know, when when the voting takes place? What month is that? Uh, I, think it's, I think it's Tuesday, right? I think they have their Super Tuesday. 
So that's when a lot of things are going to be sorted out. You know, there's another well, Super Tuesday. Well, you know, when, when will there be a clear-cut new president? Do you know? <laughs> 